Hello, I'm Kristen Rogers. It's Tuesday, March 26. Here's a look at today's top stories from your trusted local news source. The Hawkeyes are still dancing after defeating the eight seed West Virginia Mountaineers 64 to 54 in a close game in Iowa City. Caitlin Clark scored half of the team's total points in front of a sellout crowd in what was her final game at Carver Hawkeye Arena. The game was close with the lead staying narrow throughout the night. It wasn't easy for the Hawkeyes as they were held to their lowest point total this season. West Virginia opened the fourth quarter with a 10 to nothing run to tie the game with about five minutes left. But it was Sydney Unfolter with the late heroics with a three point shot to give the Hawkeyes the lead and they would never lose it, winning 64 to 54. The Hawkeyes will take on the fifth seeded Colorado Buffaloes in Albany on Saturday at 2:30. Watch that game right here on TV9. Finally, after months of delays and setbacks, demolition is now underway on part of the Brewing and Malting Building in downtown Dubuque. Officials had to close nearby streets last summer because of the building's structural issues. A city report showed the building has had issues for years and posed a danger to the public. Getting the demolition going has been a lengthy process. It ran into several setbacks, including the discovery of cancer-causing substances like asbestos. Demolition is expected to last through April 5th. Happening tonight, the Iowa City Community School Board will vote whether or not to close Hills Elementary. The district cited declining enrollment and budget issues. If the school closes, officials say the students will be transferred to Alexander Elementary in Iowa City. Superintendent Matt Denger says if the school closes, everyone who's impacted will be taken care of. Jury selection will start this morning for the man accused of stabbing and killing a woman outside a Cedar Rapids apartment complex. It's a case that sparked social justice groups to protest after weeks passed without an arrest. Shane Teslick is charged with voluntary manslaughter and disorderly conduct. Investigators arrested him nearly two months after the incident. Teslick is accused of stabbing and killing Devonna Walker in January of last year. Cell phone video captured the stabbing at the apartment complex called Cambridge Townhomes on the city's northeast side. Court documents say Teslick, who is white, called Walker, who is black, a racial slur. Investigators say Walker charged at Teslick and pushed his wife to the ground. They say Walker then hit Teslick twice before she was stabbed. Teslick's attorneys say Walker used the slur Teslick called her in the past and had a, vi a history of violence. The search for answers and missing mail continues for people in eastern Iowa and throughout the state. TV9 first started investigating in January after people voiced frustrations about mail that's documented as processed but never shows up. Lawmakers like Iowa Representative Ashley Henson say they've heard the same complaints. After hearing from about a dozen constituents in January, she sent a letter to the Postmaster General earlier this month saying people have gotten inconclusive case responses from USPS and they're concerned about the lack of transparency. I think everybody's received some sort of mail that's been damaged over the years, but usually they know what happened and where it is. In this case, to have it go minimum, uh, at a bare minimum, go missing, um, it's, it's certainly concerning that they don't know where things are. We reached out to the national USPS representatives to ask about a response to Henson's letter. A spokesperson says they've received the letter and will respond directly to her. Thanks for watching. Tune into TV9 and KCRG.com for the latest updates and breaking news.